If you're serious about becoming a better hockey player, then listen up because everything you thought you knew about hockey performance training will never realize its full potential to improve your game until you unlock the power of the mind. Now, when I say the power of the mind, I don't mean some hippy dippy stuff. No, I'm going to be showing you some real research taken directly from the scientific literature that is going to blow your mind and open up and introduce a whole new level of integration into your game day hockey performance approach. And then I'm going to show you how to get it done. You ready? Let's go. All right, we are ready to rock. What's going on, hockey player? Welcome to the presentation that I've put together for you called the Bulletproof Hockey Mindset. My main aim and focus with this presentation is to show you just how big of an impact proper hockey mindset training can have on your all-round hockey potential. I really think there's three groups of hockey players. There's hockey players who are familiar with mindset training, they've heard of it. And then there's a second group of hockey players that are a little bit more elite that understands that hockey mindset training is important. But then finally, there's this third bucket of hockey players that are the real pros. Hockey players that understand how big of an impact that hockey mindset training can have on your whole potential and why it is as important as your skill work, your dry land training, your nutrition, no matter what it is. You could have everything else dialed in, but if you don't have this dialed in, then you're never going to reach your potential in this sport. We all know that intuitively, yet for some reason, we don't act upon it. We're on a training program. We're on a diet. We do certain supplements. We have recovery routines. We do all of these things, yet everyone will be the first one to say that you have to have your mindset right to realize your potential, but people don't have routines. They don't have research that they can refer to. They don't have ideas, concepts, philosophies, systems, protocols. They don't have any of this stuff for arguably the most important aspect of the sport. And even the third bucket, the guys who are really putting their time into hockey mindset training, even they don't understand how powerful the mind is. So my main objective here is to show you some crazy research that's gonna take your understanding of hockey mindset training to a totally different level. You're gonna be a one percenter in this category because 99% of hockey players do not know this stuff. 99% of coaches don't know this stuff. So obviously you could tell I'm excited to, to teach you some cool stuff today and not just the why, but also the how. So why don't we just get right into it here, all right? Moving on, what's in it for you? Well, I basically let the cat out of the bag already. I'm gonna be showing you some really cool research, but then I'm gonna finish up with a pre-game routine. And that's real key, right? You want to be able to get your mind and your emotions right before you hit the ice so you can be patient with the puck, so you can eliminate anxiety, so you're not nervousness, so you don't bring fear with you, so you can get out of performance slumps, so you can bring that same uh, tenacity and ability, whether it's a home game or an away game or if it's a practice or if it's game day. You want to be able to bring your best self each and every single time. And I'm going to talk about the research here, and I'm also going to show you how to get it done. All right, that's what's in it for you. Uh, I want you to get a lot out of our time here together. So what are we gonna cover? Well, first I'm gonna do a real quick intro on why you should listen to me in case you've never heard of your boy, Coach Dan Garner here before. Uh, next, I'm gonna go over why mindset is everything. After that, I'm gonna go over the power of the mind. That's when we're gonna start diving into some research. Then I'm gonna give you an example, Bulletproof Protocol. So I've recently wrote a book called The Bulletproof Hockey Mindset. You may have heard about it already. You can find it at hockeytraining.com book. I'm gonna give you a protocol straight from the Bulletproof Hockey Mindset so that you can start getting to work right away. And then I'm gonna finish with some final thoughts for you so we can wrap this thing up and you can start reaching all of your hockey goals. So why should you listen to me? I'm gonna rip right through this thing because I don't like talking about myself a whole lot. Uh, I'm a strength and conditioning coach and I'm the head nutrition specialist here at hockeytraining.com as well. Um, I've contributed to many of the most prestigious research reviews in the entire world. Uh, and uh, I've presented at many very science-based symposiums. The reason why I'm saying this stuff is because I'll tell you when something's my opinion. I speak from the scientific literature. I am an evidence-based coach. So I will for sure let you know when something's my opinion and when something is research. And that's why you're gonna get a whole lot of research in this in combination with my experience working with thousands of hockey players from youth leagues all the way right, right up to many different NHL hockey players, all right? So with that said, 
let's get into the real content here. And I really want to open with a complete approach to hockey domination. You can see this ever feeding cycle here. And that is because a, a phrase that I like to say to all of my top athletes is physiology follows psychology. Your mind is going to determine where your body goes. There is so much more that we are capable of that we never tap into because our own protective mechanisms, our own comfort zones, our own preconceived limitations about our genetics or our ceiling or uh, what other people have told us that we are, we are our own worst enemy. And I really think that you, right now, I'm talking to you, your physiology is capable of so much more than you've allowed it to be because you've gotten in your own way. You have a preconceived limitation you've placed upon your speed, your agility. Maybe you've labeled yourself in the past. I'm a good puck handler, but I'm just not too fast. Or Man, I can skate really well, but I just can't shoot hard. If you give yourself a label, you will be bound to that label. You're, you will always hold yourself back from becoming a more well-rounded hockey player. So reaching your hockey potential, it's not just this upward line. It's a never ending cycle that just gets more and more powerful because as your mind gets more and more powerful, confident, eliminates anxiety, when you become your best self, physiology just backs that up. And then when physiology backs that up, your mind gets even stronger. And then because your mind got stronger, your physiology gets even stronger. And then you just keep rocking and rocking and rocking. And that cycle just keeps going as you crush dreams. Yet too many guys only focus on the first half. They've got their training, their nutrition, their skill work, their sleep, their mobility and recovery routines. They got all this stuff dialed in. And don't get me wrong. That stuff is wildly important. You can't reach your hockey potential without that stuff either. But unless you have your mindset right, that stuff doesn't matter nearly as much, okay? You have to have both. They are of equal importance. You know, when people say things like, you know, your training is 20% and nutrition is 80% or uh, uh, skill work is 80%, training is only 20%. That's all nonsense. All of that is nonsense, okay? Training is 100%. Nutrition's 100%. Mindset's 100%. Okay, they're all 100%. Why? Because they're completely different. Skill work is your execution of a hockey specific technique. Training is your ability to add horsepower to that hockey specific technique. And nutrition is your ability to recover and adapt from training. And mindset is your ability to go out there and actually use the tools that you have. Because it doesn't matter how many physical tools you have if you are impatient with the puck, if you have pregame nervousness, if you're stuck in a performance slump and you're feeling down upon yourself. All of this, you'll constantly be held back. So stop thinking in terms of percentages. Everything is 100%. If you want to reach your hockey potential, everything is 100%, and it has to be this ever, never-ending cycle of progression that you go through of physiology and psychology. Now, why is mindset everything? Well, I've already alluded to a couple of examples here just in talking to you already, but the first I have here is young talents. Young, how many young guys have you met? We all have a story of somebody we knew who had all the physical potential in the world but they never realized that potential because they didn't have what it take they didn't have what it takes upstairs. They never actually they could have gone far in hockey, but they never really went far in hockey. Maybe it was their ego. Maybe it was uh, laziness. Maybe it was procrastination. Maybe it was a lack of preparation. Maybe it was uh, anxiety. Maybe it was nervousness. Maybe it was a lack of belief in oneself. Maybe it was uh, whatever, motivation. These are all things that will hold back even the most talented people. And we all know somebody in school or at work or whatever, or our buddy from back in the day who could have been a killer out in the ice, but never was because he didn't have what it took upstairs to get the job done. Next, we have high pressure moments. Mindset is everything. You know, okay, so let's just use the example. You played an amazing three periods in the body that you have. You played an amazing three periods, but now it's a tie game and you're going into shootout. And now you perform terribly in shootouts. Was that a physical thing or was that a mental thing? It is a mental thing. Physically, you're in the exact same body you were five minutes ago. 
But now, because everybody's watching you, and it's you versus the goalie, you've allowed yourself to get all nervous. You've allowed yourself to not be your best performing self. There's something in sports psychology known as a flow state. If you are understimulated, well, then you're not bringing enough energy to the game. But if you're overstimulated, that's somebody who is not patient with the puck, whose hands are going to be shaky, whose puck control is not going to be clean, who is not going to be very accurate because they're just blasting shots rather than calculating their shots. This is all too much stimulation. So we have understimulation, overstimulation, and then a state of flow. An athlete who has it going on up here is able to enter their state of flow even in the high pressure moments. So even in a shootout, if you are the player or the goalie, both of you are feeling that pressure. Whoever deals with that pressure better is going to win that battle, period. All right. Next is practice versus game. I couldn't tell you how many live Q and A's I've done where people say, hey coach, uh, I have got this thing, man. I, I feel like I'm performing. I'm one of the best in the team during practice, but in a game, I just can't put it together. Do you have the same body on practice day as you did on game day? Oh, you do have the same body, right? You didn't change bodies? Okay, mindset. That's mindset. If you play better in practice than you do in a game, that is a roadblock. You got in your own way. You are not realizing your skills. You're not expressing your skills to the ability that you would in practice because you're more comfortable in practice than you are in a game. You need to find a bridge there. There is a psychological bridge that you need to create from practice to game. That's all mindset. You, no, you, nobody gets the, the world, the Stanley Cup of practice. Nobody breaks world records. Oh man, this guy's the best in practice. Nobody gets player of the practice of the year award, right? <laughs> nobody gets practice of the year award. This stuff doesn't exist. None of it exists. It only matters on game day. And if you're the best in practice, it really means nothing. Because uh, that means you're going to fall short in tryouts. You're going to fall short in games. You're going to fall short in the times where the scouts are watching. This is mindset, 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 mindset. And lastly, realized potential. I've got realized potential here because if you are a young talent or even not a young talent, you will never reach your potential unless you have your mindset in check. If you are in high pressure moments, which you inevitably will be, but you fall under those moments, you will never reach your hockey potential. If you play better in practice than you do in a game, you will never reach your hockey potential. Therefore, we could have every single physical tool in the world and even have all the best coaches in the world and even have all the best teammates in the world. But if we don't have our mindset in check, we will never, ever, ever reach our hockey potential. It is a rate limiting step to performance. Because you could have a perfect diet, the great sleep, and great training. But if you're nervous with the puck, or if you enter the ice with a ton of anxiety, it doesn't really matter if everything else was perfect because your physiology will follow your psychology. Okay, let's get into some very cool research here, okay? I'm going to go ahead and look at the screen here for a minute. This is some research on blood sugar, okay? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap all of this up because you might think, hey, why is this appropriate for hockey? Well, I'm going to show you a bunch of studies and then show you exactly why it's appropriate for hockey, okay? So in this uh, research, they had two groups and they separated them into three rooms. And each room had a computer and a clock. And the participants were instructed that they had to change the game on the computer that was in the room every 15 minutes. And this kept them aware of the fake time. But the clocks were altered because one room had a normal functioning accurate clock. The next room had a clock that ran fast. And the third room had a clock that ran slow. Okay, so three groups, three different rooms. They had to change the game on the screen every 15 minutes. One fast clock one accurate clock, and one slow clock. And what they found was that the test subject's blood sugar significantly dropped due to perceived time passed and not actual time passed. So when the clock ran fast, they were actually over, there was a 200% difference between groups in blood sugar regulation. So you would think that your body would regulate its own blood sugar based on an objective amount of time passed. But just due to perceived time, if someone thought they were in there longer than they actually were, well, then their mind says, oh, oh my goodness, I'm hungry. Like, your blood sugar drops. 
And this is fascinating because I've seen this a lot with hockey players who think they run out of energy if they don't eat every two hours. They think that they get crazy cravings, their blood sugar drops if they don't eat. You're just aware of the time. It's not necessarily an objective thing. You guys, there was a 200% difference in actual blood sugar levels, even though they were spending an identical amount of time in each room. Each room was the same amount of time. One clock just ran faster and one will land a little bit slower, but there was a 200% difference from the extremes. That's insane. That's 100% mindset based and zero physiologically based. How about next? We've got a very amazing study here on sleep. I know a lot of people are interested in sleep. Two groups, and this is, this is psychology 101. This is wild. So group A was told that they got eight hours of sleep per night when they only got five. Whereas group B was told that they only got five hours of sleep, but they got eight. So they put these pe people in a laboratory, right? No access to time, devices, nothing. So one group thought that they got uh, eight hours of sleep, but they only got five. And then the other group got five hours of sleep, but they were told that they got eight. And group A, even though they only got five hours of sleep, they actually had quicker reaction time because they thought they slept for eight hours. And conversely, reaction times were significantly slower when groups thought that they had five hours of sleep, but they actually slept for eight. Remember I talked previously about putting labels on yourself? Think, oh, I got a bad sleep last night. I'm not gonna perform well today. You just put a label on yourself. This shows, uh, undeniably, it's fascinating. And you guys can see on the right-hand side, I'm referencing all this literature, so you can go and check all of this after. It's fascinating. The people who thought they slept eight hours, even though they only slept five, had quicker reaction time because they thought they had a good night's sleep. Whereas even the ones who had a good night's sleep had slower reaction time just because they perceived that they had a bad night's sleep. That's absolutely fascinating. But where this study really you know, blew me away is they actually measured brain waves as well. And brain waves were measured in the participants. And when a group was told they only had five hours of sleep, they produced more delta waves during the day, which made them groggy and sleepy. So even if you slept eight hours, but you were told you slept five, your brain made more delta waves, which made you feel groggier and sleepier because you're now fulfilling the prophecy that I, I put a label on myself that I should be groggy because I only slept for five hours. But the reverse was also freaking true. If you were told you slept eight hours, even though you only slept five, you had higher alpha wave activity, which kept you alert and productive. So not only did your psychology change, not only did your brain waves change, your reaction times, everything changed. Reaction, psychology, physiology, brainwave activity. It all changed purely due to perception. Mind over matter. This is huge, you guys. This impacts blood sugar, the previous study, impact energy, daily energy to a huge level. Whereas this will impact recovery status and performance on a huge level, especially for travel teams who may be going through certain um, uh, time changes for sure. Um, how about this study? This is absolutely fascinating. This is a 12 week controlled trial where both groups perform the exact same strength training work, but one group did additional mental training in the form of visualization and positive self-talk. And the group, both remember, both groups did the exact same training program, but the group who added mindset work had larger strength gains, a decrease in heart rate, which represents better conditioning, a decrease in blood pressure, better health, better electrolyte status, and an increase in testosterone to cortisol ratio. So hormonally, structurally, and chemically, and then definitely mentally, since they were doing those drills, they got better results all round, even though they were on the exact same protocol as the other group. Guys, I hope you understand how crazy this stuff is, how, how fascinating this research is. I really don't think people understand how important the mind is. Uh, this is the crazy one. 13 individuals reactant who were reactant to poison ivy. When the researchers rubbed them with a harmless leaf, but told them it was poison ivy, all 13 broke out into a rash. But when the researchers rubbed them with real poison ivy, but then told them it was the harmless leaf, only two out of 13 broke into a rash. Try and imagine that. Your immune system reactivity was completely altered. They were rubbed with real poison ivy, but were told it was harmless. And then only two out of 13 broke into a rash. 
yet 13 out of 13 rubbed with the harmless leaf, but then who were told it was poison ivy, they broke into a rash. Mind over matter, this is in here, because your mind can serve you or work against you. If you think something's bad, it will be. However, if you think something's good, it will be. Take that into consideration. How about this one? This is another awesome one, very relevant for you guys. 12 subjects, six male, six female. They undertook three identical rides to exhaustion on a cycle erg ergometer. One clock was normal, again, manipulation and perception of time. Uh, one clock was 10% faster and one clock was 10% slower. Subjects were able to cycle to exhaustion longer when the clock ran slower. So if you, your perception of time, if you think you were on the bike longer than you actually were, well, then your mind fulfilled that prophecy as if you're exhausted. However, if the clock ran slow, then your mind fulfilled the prophecy that you had more gas in the tank. Subjects were able to cycle to exhaustion longer when the clock ran slower and achieved statistical significance. So this is an enhancement in conditioning just when you're not putting a label on yourself. Oh man, I've been going for a half hour. Oh dude, I've been going for an hour. I do. This is, this is, this is mind. This is not body. You're capable of so much more than you allow yourself to do actually execute. So in summary, physiology follows psychology. I can't say that enough. This is a very small sample of the research. What I show you, like five, six studies, maybe? There's dozens. There's dozens out there on placebo, on nocebo, on positive and negative emotion and self-perception, all of that stuff. And in this super small sample of research that I've showed you, I've showed you that perception impacts blood sugar, immunity, sleep quality, daily energy, reaction time, strength gains, heart rate, blood pressure, testosterone levels, stress hormone levels, and conditioning. Take a second to think about that and really absorb that. Chemically, hormonally, structurally, muscular, strength, uh, uh, conditioning. It's all there, all of it, including mind, including mind, unlocking your potential. Like physiology follows psychology. All these studies did was manipulate the mind and Jesus, did the body ever follow? It completely changed their internal chemistry and the outcome of whatever task that they were set to do. So you've got to start taking mindset training more seriously. It's something that'll change your life. And I mean that. And I hope this sample of the research showed you. And there's so much more that we, I could have done a million presentations. This could have been eight hours. I could show you so many studies on this crazy type of impact that not enough of the hockey world is familiar with yet. So how, what's a good example of bringing this into your life? Well, a pregame protocol I love athletes to go through is right in front of you here, okay? Now, I have a multi-step process. Again, that's in the Bulletproof Hockey Mindset book over at hockeytraining.com slash book. I go over the science of the mind. I go over eliminating any root cause issues you might have, like uh, anxiety, nervousness, uh, inability to be patient with the puck, performance slumps. All, I go over confidence, everything. And then I also go over the how. So the how includes many protocols as well as a step-by-step -step guide that you can use as a system to unlock your mind. This is just one protocol. So understand that that book includes the science of the mind and then eliminating all of your root cause problems. And then part three is activating your bulletproof mindset. And this is only one protocol within part three. So there's a whole lot more to be discovered here, but I just thought you'd think that this one is cool. All right, so pregame protocol. Two minutes before you start the protocol, begin creating the internal intention, okay? So what does creating the internal intention mean? It means you wanna start bridging the gap now between your everyday self to your higher performing self. Like this is when I would, you know, say just professionally speaking, when I'm doing my job, this is when I'm converting from Dan Garner to coach Garner. That's a different kind of person. It's a different man. I, you got to put, you got to have a different kind of mindset. You got to come in there with authority. I am coach. That's what's up right now. It's, it's a totally different thing. You need that in the ice. Like you, your position, maybe your, your Jersey number is number 10. Like number 10 is here. Let's rock and roll. You, you are creating that bridge. You're bridging your everyday self to your high performance self. 
your school self to your elite hockey player self, your video game self to your hockey dream self. Like many of us don't actually create that bridge. We kind of, if we're playing Call of Duty for an hour and then it's time for practice, we still kind of just go to practice in that mindset. But if we create a bridge, we now we've got an intention. Now, okay, I am here with a purpose and it's time to become something else, okay? So I allot you two minutes to create that internal shift. You want to transform here. I'm asking you to transform. This is when we begin that in, the internal shift. And then once that intention is set, it should almost feel like a knot. Like I can feel it even right now, just talking about it. It should almost feel like a knot. Like that intention is, it's there, it's ready, but it's controlled. And then this is something we couldn't even get into. That's when I want you to put your headphones on and activate a frequency of 7.83 Hertz. So this is a frequency that activates certain brainwave activity. We talked a little bit about brainwave activity um, with respect to focus and alertness and energy and stuff like that in the sleep study. This is something I want you to do pre-game, okay? So we're gonna have an audio frequency in our ears after the intention's already been set. So now that frequency is in our mind, it's activating certain brain waves that are strengthening that intention to convert from that everyday self into our high performance self. And we're activating the mind, which means we're activating the body. So now it's ready to, we're ready to sit comfortably and in an upright position. So almost like in a meditative state, but like not in a corny meditative state, you just like, you get put on your, uh, your assertive posture, right? Shoulders back chest a little bit forward, your neck and your spine are straight up. When you're activating your bulletproof self, you're never gonna do it here. Body language is a lot when it comes to psychology. So I'm never gonna be a dominant hockey player if this is how I am. I gotta be a little bit more like this. This demonstrates confidence. This demonstrates, and you are, you look how you feel. Like you, if, if you look confident, you feel that, that they go together. So you, that body language has got to represent. So I want you to keep that in your mind, okay? When you're sitting in an upright position and you're comfortable, you're comfortable because you're confident and you're upright because you're confident. So that audio frequency wave, that intention, this is all set. And now we're not getting crazy here because getting crazy is too much stimulation, remember? We're just getting into that flow state. So now I actually want you to just, re we're gonna take a step back and we're gonna take five total body pendulum breaths to clear and calm the mind. And I teach you about pendulum breathing in the book, but it's a way in which you can basically activate your body without overstimulating it. Because I want you, so let's say you have the puck, or uh, let's say you have the puck. If you're overstimulated, you're not going to be patient. But if you're activated, if you're calm but assertive, you're going to be able to read the ice and make the right decision. Even in between shifts, you're going to be calm. You're going to be ready. It's a, it's a different level of flow state. So these total body pendulum breaths remember i say total body i don't just say belly breathing i don't just say chest breathing no total body pendulum breathing so we're activating a completely different set here but i'm making sure that you stay within the flow state because deep breathing helps lower heart rate calm that body back down and then at this point after your pendulum breaths i want you to activate representational engagement of intention so this is one of the steps, okay, uh, that I talk about in the book, representational engagement, because I want you to go beyond visualization. Visualization, we already saw in the research how powerful that was, but that is just visualization, right? You're, you're closing your eyes and you're seeing how you're going to perform out in the ice, that kind of thing, or you're going to perform in your workout. Representational engagement is different. I want you to take it a step further. Representational engagement is a representation of all of your senses being engaged in that visualization so all of your senses so if you're visualizing yourself dominating out in the ice <clears throat> what does it smell like what is what was the ice smell like you know that smell now what do you see in front of you you got your opponents you've got your own team you can smell the ice how does it feel how does the ice feel digging into your skates throughout this time what does it taste like how does that cold air taste right we want sight sound taste touch we want everything we are activating absolutely everything here and that is what's going to allow you to get to that next bullet point here achieving transcendence transcendence is now when you've become someone else you are now 
in your bulletproof mindset because you're smelling the ice, you're feeling the ice, you're feeling the puck, you're gripping your stick, you can taste the cold air, everything is going your way. Your bulletproof state has now reached transcendence. You're now there. This is your activated self. And now you can open your eyes with the knowledge, confidence, and relentlessness of a bulletproof hockey player because now that bridge from your everyday self to your high performance self has been walked. You have achieved it over the previous steps that you've just done. You open your eyes and now it's like a trigger. You open your eyes and you're just ready, okay? So then as you travel to the rink and you warm up, nothing will pull you out of transcendence unless you let it, okay? This is when you've, your guard, your guards, and you did all of this preparation work so you can remain in transcendence. Some small talk will happen, you know, that, that's, that's as you get closer to puck drop, things are there's gonna be small talk and planning and things like that, that's okay. Never allow it to get you out of transcendence and just take pendulum breaths whenever you need to, to reactivate that sequence. And then you'll see the last thing here. You go out there and freaking dominate. Because once you've activated that bulletproof uh, potential within you, now you're playing to your potential. Now you've gotten out of your own way and now you're gonna perform at a level you never thought you were capable of because you've gotten rid of the labels you've put on yourself. You've gotten rid of any limitations. You've gotten rid of anything anybody's ever told you. You've totally let your everyday self gone in the past because now you're in your high performance self. You're a different animal now. You are a different animal right now than you were 20 minutes ago. Every single pro athlete says mindset is more important than anything else in their interviews for a reason. You need it. You need to become someone else. And that is what this type of protocol does. Psychologically, chemically, hormonally, from a neurotransmitter perspective, all of it, all right? Now you know the power of the mind and you know what a real pregame ritual will look like and how this can act as a trigger. So this ritual you notice this is this is not required equipment or anything like that so this is a trigger you can create for home games away games um, if you're jet lagged for practice for anything you want this is available to you to act as your ritual that you use so that you don't have an off night the guys consistently play poorly on away games compared to home games because they're not in their normal routine this is your routine it doesn't matter the bulletproof hockey player doesn't need a routine. He doesn't stick to a routine. He is bulletproof no matter where he goes because he's able to activate it like a switch through a protocol like this. So if you're interested in learning more about my approach to hockey mindset training, go to hockeytraining.com slash book. I can't, I think this is the most important piece of literature I've ever written in my life because mindset is everything. I hope I've shown you with the examples in today's presentation. I hope I've shown you in the research in today's presentation. I hope I've shown you with the protocol in today's presentation. And I hope that you've already seen every single NHL player in interviews talk about how the mind is everything when it comes to performance. This is something you already know, but now you need a system and a protocol to get the job done. And that's what this book does. This book provides you with actual action steps. You don't just get science. You don't just get motivation. You don't just get any, you get a system and a protocol. This is something, this is a workable system. You're gonna get a pre-game routine. You're going to get a post-game routine. There's different frequencies to listen to to accelerate recovery, by the way. You're gonna get a pre-bed calming sequence, an energy uh, enhancer. You're gonna get uh, a breathing routine that's gonna improve your conditioning. You're gonna get all kinds of stuff, okay? It's a 276 page book that I spent a year on and a life's work coaching thousands of hockey players and NHL players, the best techniques that I've used to unlock their potential, okay? You gotta check out this book. Go to hockeytraining.com book and unlock your potential. Let's go.